Imagine getting up every day full of energy as if you were in your 20s again. What would that be like? What would it be worth to you? What is your health worth to you? Think about it. Your health isn't everything, but without it, everything else is nothing. And yet, too many of us are taking it for granted until something goes wrong. And no one wakes up hoping to be diagnosed with a disease or chronic illness. And yet, we've never been taught how to be proactive in our health through our school or public health. As a registered health coach and integrative health practitioner, I believe it's time this information is made available to everyone. Combining new knowledge around your health and the ability to do my functional medicine lab tests in the comfort of your own home will allow you to optimize your health for today and all your tomorrows. Don't wait for your wake up call. Welcome back to the Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call podcast. I am your host, Melissa Dealey, and excited to bring you another amazing guest today, Tim James. Welcome to the podcast, Tim. Hey, Melissa. Thanks for having me on today. It's a pleasure. I'm excited to have you here and to just introduce you to the audience. Tim is one of those guys that will leave you feeling younger and more energetic just by hearing him speak. Now, isn't that amazing? Doesn't that what everybody wants? His passion flows out of him like a fresh waterfall in a dry desert. He's 49, but feels like he's 18 with more energy. What is his secret? So I absolutely love this, Tim, because it so aligns with my message. I'm always saying that I'm 53 and feel feel better than I did when I was 30 and that we don't have to accept feeling older or feeling worse because the years are going by and that we can actually be doing more for our body and our health to ensure that we are always feeling amazing like we did in our 20s. So I would love you to start off by sharing your story as we dive into how you have discovered this youthful energy. Yeah, it's kind of like a paradigm shift, right? Like back in the day, you know, whole society and everybody thinks the world is flat. And then all of a sudden, nope, it's round. And then it's like, whoa, there's this big shift. And you're like, whoa, it's round. And then that's the new reality. So it's the same thing with the health. Like my whole, my, you know, by the age of 37, I was like 42 pounds overweight. I was skin issues and all this stuff. And I, I learned all this stuff and I, my paradigm has shifted. Now it's like, how healthy can I get? And I feel really great. And I was able to self heal. So my story started back on the farm. I grew up in Eastern Oregon, uh, hunting and fishing. Uh, we had a big garden. I put myself through college. I played baseball and I put myself through college cutting firewood. So I was up in the woods a lot. Um, I was healthy, like healthy as a horse, no problems, no issues. Grew up on the standard American diet though. But as I got older, it wasn't working anymore. So fast forward to age 37, I had acid reflux really bad. I was eating Tums and Rolaids literally 24 seven because of that. Um, I had like my gut just wasn't, ugh, it was just didn't feel good. And then um, I developed eczema on, on my knee, a big patch on my knee. And eventually that led to eczema on my, both of my elbows. So both of my elbows and my knee would crack and bleed and stick to my pants. Or uh, as a financial advisor at the time, I couldn't wear white shirts anymore because they would get blood on them and stain them. So I had to wear dark shirts. And it was just embarrassing. I go over to somebody's house and Hey, there's blood on the wall. Who's bleeding? And it's like, uh, that's me. I'd be over there cleaning up, you know, blood all the time on somebody's couch or the wall I'd bump into. So you don't realize that you bump into stuff all the time until you get blood coming out, but you do. And then, you know, and then it got worse. And then I started uh, bleeding rectally when I pooped. That's why for those of you that are listening, you can't see me, but uh, my shirt says love when you poop. And it's one of our big missions over here because a lot of people I found out were like me They're They like going to number two was like a painful experience for me, like twice a day. It was like rocks coming out and then blood followed by blood. And I look at it and go, God, I hope that goes away. And then, you know, I went to the doctor and they wanted to put me on Prilosec, but that just sounded weird or these medications. And sometimes when I was really down and desperate or depressed, I would actually go fill the prescription, but then I'd read the side effects. It's like, you know, you could have increased gambling or your left toe would go numb or, you know, it could lead to this type of a cancer or it was like 37 of these things that were just like weird things. And I'm just like, I'm not putting this crap on my body. At least I know what's wrong with me now. That, but I don't want to go over to that stuff. So that was the one smart thing that I did. Uh, but I still didn't even know what I was doing. I tried high fat, low fat, high carb, low carb, high protein, low protein, five meals. I was trying everything I could, but I wasn't getting the right information. And, um, and then on a, a, a vacation to Peru, I actually got um, doubled over in pain out in the 
we were just south of tomb uh, it was called tomb Bay, south of ecuador northern peru we were out in a fishing trip beautiful area in the, in the ocean and i was doubled over in pain her dad my, my wife's at times dad was a medical doctor ran a huge clinic in lima and he's like well we got to get you to hospital so we drove down to the airport and i just missed the the one plane flight a day out of this place very remote by 30 minutes He's like, we can't wait. You could die. Now I'm freaked out, but I'm bent over literally at a 90 degree angle. Like I can't walk erect. So they put me out they rented a van and they drove down this bumpy road for six hours in the middle of the night. And every bump, Melissa was like, somebody's punching me or stabbed me with a knife, punch, punch, stab, bump, 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 six hours of this. By the time I got there, it was the most, it was the hor most horrible experience of my life. And I actually was interviewed yesterday by a gal and she said, oh, you know what it's like to have a child then it was like child labor i'm like yeah i probably do because when i got <laughs> done i was exhausted i was done i had no energy i was sweating my clothes were wet in fact i sweated so much that the the paper money in my wallet was wet that's how much sweating i was doing so they got there they put me on an examination table i look up and there's bugs flying around in this um in the uh in the light because i'm literally in a third world country and i'm like this isn't good like bugs in the hospital you know moths and stuff flying around flies and and they doped me up, put me on a plane flight, and and flew me to Lima. You're not supposed to do this. I should have went right into surgery right there, but uh, my wife's dad wanted me to have his surgeons handle it. So I took a taxi cab from the commercial plane flight right to the hospital, and they put me on a gurney right into surgery. And I spent the rest of my vacation recovering. And um, then my wife pushed me in a wheelchair back into the States on the plane flights and stuff. So um, I learned a couple important lessons from that. Number one, um, I don't ever want to go in the hospital again and get surgery. It was scary. Thank God. This is where Western medicine shines. They do. A, I mean, it was Western medicine was born out of crisis care in wartime. So if you get shot or you get your leg blown off, you get shrapnel, they patch you up. It's awesome. Thank God we have them car accidents, but for taking care of people with chronic issues, fail, absolute failure. Look around. You don't, you, you don't need to have a, um, you know, be a rocket scientist to figure out that we're actually the sickest that human beings have ever been since the history of humans. Like mm -hmm. we've never been sicker than we are now. 38% of children are overweight or obese or morbidly obese. When I was a kid, there was like one overweight kid in the room or two, and that was it. Now it's like 40% of the children are overweight, 80% of adults and, and all these health issues and all the medications. I was actually like, looking at some stats yesterday that came through that in 2021, I'm not talking just children, but in 2021 in, in the US, it's 42.4% of the population is obese, not just overweight, obese. But if we go back just 40 years to 1980, it was between 13 and 14%. Which so is still ridiculous. It's still ridiculous, but that yeah. increase in just 40 years yeah. is astounding, right? And so clearly something is wrong, right? Yeah. And I totally yeah. agree with it's you that our acute, our acute care system is fabulous, but when mainstream comes at looking at healing chronic illness, that's where we have a problem because what we're doing isn't working. Absolutely. So the second thing I learned was that my poor health doesn't affect just me. It affects everybody else around me because I ruined that vacation for my wife and her dad. In fact, her dad had never taken a vacation in 30 years at that hospital. Yeah. It was his first vacation. He was a workaholic. He loved his work. He helped people. He had all these patients, and, and he ran this hospital. And where did he end up? Back in the hospital taking care of me. So, um, you know, think about this. It's not just about you. It's about the people that you love and care about because if you don't take care of your health, then, I mean, look at the Alzheimer's and dementia and the memory loss. I mean, I'm, the, I'm dealing with this right now with um, a friend that I'm helping that has breast cancer. And she's also taking care of mom and dad. They're like 89 and 92. And they'll ask you a question. And then one minute later, ask you the same question. One minute later, ask you the same question. One minute later, ask you the same question. They don't know where they're at, who they're at half the time. And they'll yell and scream. And it's very stressful, right? And, you know, that urinating all over the floor or wake up in the middle of the night. And they just, they go into the wrong room. And they go into the bar area and they, they pee on the floor, you know, stuff like that. It's like, do you want to be a burden like that on your children? I don't, I don't want to be that. My grandfather died of Alzheimer's and he was a strong physical man, but he lost his brain. And I love that guy. We, he was the best. Like I, he was the one guy in my, in my family that was into baseball like me. And so we, we had a really, oh, just a great relationship. And uh, to, to, for him in my early twenties to look at me and you could tell he didn't even know who I was from time to time. 
that was a hard pill to swallow. I didn't have any spiritual practice back then. I didn't know how to deal with that kind of stuff. So I just, I felt uncomfortable and sad. I felt really sad. So I've learned my lesson from that, from my grandfather. And I don't ever want to do that. I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy that's like babbling around and peeing on things and, you know, and, and just doing spitting on the floor and, you know, and doing that kind of stuff. So anyway, I agree. And we now, you know, again, we're told we're living longer, but the latest stats out of Canada through Edward Jones is showing that in North America, the average person is actually spending 10 years in a nursing home, basically dying for those 10 years, right? And like you, I have a grandmother that she's my inspiration because she lived by herself in her own home, caring for herself, fully cognitively functioning until the age of 101 when she died in her sleep. Now that is a life well lived. And that's the life, right? That's the life that I want, which is why I choose to be proactive in my health and take responsibility for my health, which wasn't something that I grew up knowing. It wasn't something I even knew when I was in the corporate world. It's literally been my life's journey the last seven years where, you know, things changed in my life and I ended up without a job and I ended up following, you know, being guided into the work that I do and having all of these ahas about it's not someone else's responsibility to take care of my health. I don't, you know, ignore my health until I get sick and go to the doctor and have them fix me. That's not their responsibility. It's my responsibility to take care of my health. Yeah. I've never seen an elephant bitch and moan and complain about somebody else not taking care of them. (laughs) They take care of themselves. Like that's the way it works, right? That's right. It's like, you you gotta take, you gotta gotta carry your own weight around here. There's no free, free ride anywhere. Um, well, that's not true. I saw some monkeys jump on the top of a, a boar on a, a TikTok video, and that was pretty funny. But all right, so finish the story. All right, so now I come back into the states, but I still don't know what to do. My friend, um, my baseball team, Clay Mahoy, he gets cancer, stomach cancer. He dies. He leaves three little boys behind, and I that was my experience. My grandma died of brain cancer. My aunt had died of skin cancer and lung cancer, melanoma, and um, and then my buddy Clay. Uh, dies of stomach cancer and he looked like 80 pounds under his weight when he died he was on hospice and morphine and he looked like he was in a concentration camp it was horrible and we did a fundraiser at the church and stuff for his for his children he didn't have any insurance um that was horrible and then my buddy uh charles gets diagnosed at age 43 with chronic lymphocytic leukemia so i'm like jesus it's like 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 he's done you know i'm like and i'm and then he's like, hey, Tim, I want you, I, I, they don't have anything for me at the hospital. I just wait and put me on some experimental deals. So he goes, I'm going to freaking live. I want to see Charlie, his son. He goes, I want to see him graduate high school. I want to go to father-son weekend. We have this all planned out. I don't want to die. He's an entrepreneur. He's like, I'm going to, I'm, and he grabbed the reins, like what you're just talking about, instead of sitting back and waiting for somebody else to do it. And he freaking just started using his brain and his intellect and, and figuring out what can I do? What can I do to live? And guess what? When you have your back against the wall and a gun to your head, you'll do a lot. <laughs> you always like you're digging and crawling and scraping and whatever you can do. And you don't care about what, hey, if, if I can drink a green juice and it's gonna help me, I'm doing it. I don't care what anybody says. Like, what are you doing, you veggie boy drinking that green juice? Like, yeah, dude, I want to freaking live. I got cancer. Screw you. So anyway, we get in a plane. Mindset too, right? He made a choice and he chose to live. Yes. Right? Yeah. You have to first choose to to live, choose to believe in your ability to heal. Because as soon as you have that, then the body can start healing. If you don't believe you're going to live or you don't believe you can heal, well, guess what? You're not going to. Yeah. And I will actually say this, that when I when he broke the news to me, I could see the fear of God in his eyes. Like he was scared. So he was, it was, he was going fear-based, you know? So they say that at the Institute, you either get enlightened or frightened. And that's what brings people there to start making change. Right. And that shifted later in his mind, eyes when he, as his white blood cell counts were improving, he finally knew he's like, I'm going to heal. And then you could tell he's like, I got this. So anyway, we go there and the first week, like first day, my acid reflux is gone. So I'm like, whoa. And I was still very skeptical. I'm like, how could some little podunk place like this help people like, I mean, they got race for the cure. They're spending billions of dollars on research. We have our best minds and doctors on this, right? So how could this place be doing it? Well, they were. So I go there, even though I'm skeptical, the first class was called internal awareness. This doctor comes out and he's just freaking, he jacked. I mean, he's got muscles. He looks great. Found out later him and his wife are bodybuilders. And um, he was really cool. And he, and he started teaching us about how when you eat food until it leaves the body, everything that happens, I was like, wow, this is fantastic. Like, this is great. How come I didn't know this in high school? Did they show us this or was I throwing spitwads? I don't even know what's That's going on. That's exactly my experience when I started health coaching school. Same thing. 
how come I didn't know this? How come no one's ever told me this before? Yeah, and it was common sense. It just kind of made sense. So he started, the, the, the main takeaway was that the average person has about six to 12 pounds of impacted fecal material in lining the colon. And we got to get it out. And he looked at me, he said, Tim, you got 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. And if you ever want to be healthy, truly healthy, you got to get that stuff out of there. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you do? And he's like, he was trying to sell us on a colonic or colon hydrotherapy. Have you heard of those? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So for the listeners listening, if you don't know, because I didn't, you're sitting on a tube rectally and water gently goes in and out of your colon. That's what it is. Now, if you go online and research this stuff, they're going to fear you to death and say it's going to kill you because there was, um, what happened was is somebody got a colonoscopy and a lot of times when they do colonoscopies, they'll nick the lining and it takes a week to heal. So this person got their lining nicked by a colonoscopy and then they went in and got a colon hydrotherapy session and that's what killed them. It was, it was an instant. So all colon hydrotherapists know if you've had a colonoscopy and that's on your intake sheet, you don't do the colon hydrotherapy session. You wait at least a week. Right. And for me, I'd wait two weeks just because yeah. I just to be make safe. sure that's healed. So the bacteria then, is not that, getting into the wound. <laughs> that goes to show you like how fast the body's regenerating. Like we're re you can nick the intestinal lining in a week. It's healed. Like it replaces right. itself and the liver regenerates and the skin regenerates and our mm -hmm. hair's growing and our nails are growing. So our body's a self regenerating. Oh, everything. Yeah. It knows how to heal. Right. And if, and mm -hmm. if people have further information, actually on my podcast, the health hero show at episode 38, I interviewed a gastro girl. She's an act. Her name's Rebecca Harder. She's a colon hydrotherapist, ACT1 certified instructor level, and she's done over 20,000 colonics. She has two clinics, one in Taos, New Mexico, and one in Portland, Oregon that I go to. And um, she debunks everything, and she talks in depth about colon hydrotherapy if people are wanting to know more. Okay, so I'm at the Institute, and I'm like looking at Charles. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do this colon hydrotherapy thing, dude. I don't care what, what he says. It makes sense, but I'm not doing it. And then the doctor was smart. He brought four videos out of virtual colonoscopies three unhealthy people and one person that had been on this Hippocrates living food lifestyle deal for a few years. The first person was a 24 year old female that had Hashi, uh, yeah, Hashimoto's uh, thyroid deal and then thrush, a yeast infection. And mm -hmm. inside of her colon was literally yellow and white. And it was just, she had this candy, this overgrowth, this yeast overgrowth. It was gross. I was like, holy crap. I didn't even know that was possible inside because you can't see it. Right? right. And then the next one was a 65 year old male with colon cancer and, um, and he had parasites and it was black tar looking in there and white worms crawling around. I was like, holy crud. I mean, usually in the colon, you'd think it'd be brown waste matter. It was black. It was weird. And then he, and he turns around and he said, Hey, and just don't think that this parasite deal is a third world affair. Over 50% of you easily have parasites. And we're not just talking about the hookworms, the pinworms, right. and the tapeworms that you can see with the naked eye. We're talking about microscopic parasites that are eating your food, drinking your drinks, mm -hmm. and urinating and defecating and you creating more acid and they're laying thousands of eggs. Mm -hmm. And okay, now, dude, you got my attention. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they went to a 45 year old female in her colon and it was, uh, she had uh, breast cancer and um, colitis or Crohn's. Her gut was all jacked up. So and inside of her, see black, nasty, whatever. Then they went to the person about the Hippocrates lifestyle for all. Now, there was brown waste matter in there, but the intestinal lining was pink and there's red blood vessels. My whole point was is the terrain was completely different. Right. And boom, that's when I got it. It's an inside job. Yes, it's, it it's, a, it's the insides that matter. So if you have a healthy inside, your skin, everything, your energy, everything's going to fix. So it was all about cleaning the body up, detoxing, cleansing. So we've stuck with the lifestyle at that place. And, um, within about a week, uh, I might went, I had some night sweats. I was irritable. I had a metallic taste coming out of my tongue as heavy metals were exiting the body. I didn't have it as bad as other people though. Some people had rashes breaking out of their body or all over. Um, some people had parasites. Literally you'd see them crawling out their pores. One lady at lunch had a parasite crawl out of her eye when we were having lunch. So what was happening? Well, we were changing the internal terrain and we were making it very inhospitable for these harmful organisms. We were going from a high acid, low oxygen lifestyle and body to a high alkaline, high oxygen lifestyle and body and changing that terrain. And then the viruses, the bacteria, the mold, the yeast, the fungus, these parasites and mutagens, cancers, they packed their bags and left. Just right. like if a penguin or polar bears were dropped off in Miami in the middle of the summer, they're going to be like, this isn't hospitable. I hate this. They're going to jump in the water and they're going to go south or north and find a cooler temperature. And that's what, what happened. So it was kind of like a Hertz reaction, they call it, or uh, detox symptoms, or, you know, they called it like and doing surgery. reaction. That's what yeah, hurt, yeah. Or doing yeah. surgery without a knife, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the most comfortable thing. I'll be honest, but I woke up on day five and I was like, 
my brain was turned on. My arms were tingling with energy. And I looked at Charles. I'm like, dude, do you feel as good as I do? And he's like, yeah. I was like, I literally feel like I'm 18. I'm like, dude, we've discovered the fountain of youth. Like literally this is like, it's not like woo woo mythological stuff. It's like, it's just nature. And it's like these fresh foods and, and juices and stop putting this crap in your body. And it's like, God, it's such common sense. Why didn't we think of this? It's like, he's, I don't know. And it's like, we were so just sucked into that societal conditioning and all the stuff from our parents and grandparents and everybody else and negativity. And, and man, I said, dude, you're going to heal. I can't believe I'm going to say this because I was, I was hunting and fishing and deer and elk and chuckers. And I said, I'm going to give up all meat except for bacon. I'm going to do this whole plant-based thing with you. We're going to go home. And I bought a juicer and we started juicing. I started growing wheatgrass and, and I started delivering the sprouts to him. And, and uh, within uh, 60 days, I completely healed myself. My, my elbows were completely healed. The skin issue in my shoulder it took about eight months for that big patch of eczema in my knee to heal up because it was pretty bad. Um, I, could, I, I lost all the weight, my ribs. It's like it's been off this way for 11 years. And in two and a half years, my buddy Charles, his white blood cell counts were back to normal. No chemo, no radiation, no surgery. Heals himself of cancer right in front of my face. And he got to see his son graduate high school. He went to father-son weekend, and his son just sold his real estate agent and just sold him a home. So Charles son sold him a home and we play guitar now together. And he went from bankruptcy and cancer to he's got a successful practice business now and he's cancer free. He's playing guitar. He's, you know, he's a dad. He's seeing his son and his son has a dad. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty cool story. And I got to witness the whole thing. I love that story and the fact that you witnessed it. And it so aligns with so many of the messages that I've been sharing on this podcast for, you know, the more than the year that I've been running it. And that is that, your dis-ease does not have to be a life sentence and that we can create a body that is inhospitable to disease when we uh, start detoxing on a regular basis. It's not just a one-time thing because of course the toxins are always coming in and we help get all of those pathogens out. So yeah. I, I love that you got to experience that with your own eyes with a close friend and that his son still has a dad. I mean, what a beautiful thing. And then he got to experience yeah. everything that he wanted to experience. And I just hope that inspires other listeners that there are other ways to healing and to investigate all of them and figure out what is right for you because you absolutely can heal. The human body is designed to heal. We just have to create the environment for it to be able to do so. And a big it's, it's almost that. like it's almost like the spiritual path. I've been learning a lot about this the last few years since 2018. And it's like the picture of the sun, the warmth of the sun coming in. Like that's that self, that's that love, right? Mm -hmm. And opening your heart space and 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 being able to feel it and express it. And it's always there. The sun's always there, loving you, loving you. It's that that it's creation, like it's a never-ending stream of love and understanding. But the problem is, is that clouds get in the way right? and they block the sun. It's not that the sun's not there. It's not that the love is not there. It's the clouds. And you just got to get the clouds out of the way. It's the same thing with the body. The body is just ready to rock and roll. It's always ready. Immune system's ready to heal. It's a very complicated system. It's very profound. It's billions of years of technology. It's, it's quite amazing when you break it down on the molecular level. I've, I've looked at a lot of this stuff with like Dr. Shiva Ayadure and Dr. Bruce Lipton and stuff like that. And it's like, it's unbelievable. A lot of stuff's over my head, but I'm, and I've actually seen electron microscopes of cells inside of our body. Holy crud. I mean, it's like unbelievable. It's like a whole nother world going on in there. Like literally it looks like, you know, this one thing's running around in your body. It looks like an excavator and it's grabbing stuff and moving things around <laughs> and the DNA chains, something comes up and touches it and it unravels and it comes back together. And it was like, I was like, holy crud. Like people have no idea how freaking amazing we are. Exactly. It's um, this, this, this body is freaking, it's unbelievable what we can do. It, it really is. It absolutely is. And even when you think about, you know, the over 6 trillion um, microbes that we have in our body that make up our microbiome that are there to live with us synergistically and break down our food and allow us to thrive. And the fact that you had said you, you know, grew up on the standard American diet and, you know, people are just doing what they know to do when they're in a do, do, do life. And if it's in the grocery store, you think that it's safe and it's okay to eat, right? Because it's in the grocery store. And yet that diet's only giving us 17 of the nine zero nutrients that our body needs to thrive. And well, let's look at something like dandelions as an example. A lot of people buy Roundup that has glyphosate in it that on the TV right now today, Attorney firms are paying for ads and says, 
If you've been, if you've got developed lymphoma cancer and you've been exposed to glyphosate, the main ingredient in Roundup, you may be entitled to compensation. Joe Blow in California just got $77 million lawsuit win. And it's like, whoa, why are they advertising that? Because they want, those attorneys want to be a chunk of those lawsuits because glyphosate has been proven to cause cancer in humans. Yet you can go to your home and garden center today and, and go down and spray it on that dandelion and get it out of your yard, even though dandelions are a top 10 Chinese herb. Mm -hmm. They are a bitter and we have, we have like 25 bitter receptors in our stomach and only one sweet receptor. So most people are spraying toxic chemicals onto something that would actually heal them. Right. That's how backwards the thinking is going. And we're, we're so disconnected from nature and where we come from. Mm -hmm. And then we track those chemicals into our family and we poison and kill our family too slowly and our neighbors because 97% of that goes into the ecosystem and then out into the tributaries and then back into the air and the water and the rain and everything else. So it's like, what are we doing? Cause we just and need to pause to for a moment. Mention, exactly. And not to mention that, you know, industrial agriculture is still using glyphosate and all of those pesticides and herbicides in order to have a more drought resistant crop and a, a bigger crop, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you know, to make more profit. Right. Yeah. And for those of you that have dealt with gluten intolerance and gluten allergies, and you maybe have got some, some benefits, but all of a sudden it's not working anymore. You probably also have a glyphosate allergy, just like the gluten allergy. So it's like, that's probably kind of the new frontier is like getting foods that are glyphosate free. That's starting to crop up a little bit. It's crazy. 74% of rainwater has glyphosate in it today. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It's in, it's so pervasive and they're just dumping tons and tons and tons and tons of it all over. And it's, in, it's going it's just accumulating. The earth is only so big. There's only so much real estate. It's all I mean, one atmosphere. The winds blow it everywhere. And glyphosate, yeah. also, it's also listed as an antibacterial. And so that every time we're exposed to it, not only is it toxic, but it's killing off, you know, the balance in our microbiome. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Crazy, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, but there's solutions. Let's not dwell on the fear-based stuff. It's exactly. just, okay, here's the awareness. Now what do I do? So yeah, let's talk about some of those. I would love for you to talk about the um, intermittent fasting for energy, for mental clarity, for weight loss. Cause I know that's a, a term that, you know, people are bouncing around and it's something that mm -hmm. I use in my practice with my clients, but talk to me about, you know, your experience with intermittent fasting and uh, so that other people can understand how they might be able to implement that in their sure. life. Well, the first thing to understand is that a lot of people, when they hear the word fasting, they get scared. And it's, it's nothing to be scared of because you're, you're fasting every day. When you go to sleep and you're sleeping and you wake up, you fasted all night. You did it. You've already done it. So, and you fast in between meals. So we're already doing it. Right? Or we should. So, yeah. So let's go back in time, at least to when we were nomadic. So when we were nomadic, we would, we would walk for two or three days and we wouldn't eat anything. We're walking, we're searching. And then we'd maybe come to a meadow and our ancestors would find the, uh, the ancestors of spinach or cabbage or berries in the fall, or maybe a crab apple or whatever, right? They find this food. And you would eat one food monolithically, mostly. You eat just one thing because there it was. You'd eat it because you found it. And then you would maybe walk a half an hour, two hours, and then you'd find some water and you'd drink it. Um, that's one of the, that's actually one of our hacks because I've realized that when you drink water with meals or any liquid, whether it's beer, wine, water, it doesn't matter, apple juice, you're actually diluting digestive enzymes. It's actually one of our core four secrets in our core four secrets manual. So, um, so we, we, we were nomadic, we would walk for two or three days and we were fasting. So what happens is, is that when you're, you know, when you're getting the nutrition you need from, from, cause you're getting fresh foods actually grown in nutrient dense soils, you're not going to have not even close to the hunger cravings that you're having today. This is why our society is like, you mentioned the obesity rates. There is no difference between an obese person in America and a starving child with a distended stomach in Africa. The only difference is, is they're both nutrient deficient. They're both malnourished. Totally. The only difference is, is we're getting excess calories with nutrient deficient foods. So the, the child, he's all super skinny over there in Africa with a distended stomach is a protein deficiency. And then over here, we have the same deficiencies, yet we're overweight. Yeah. So we're, we're literally overweight yet malnourished, just like that child. So when your cells are full of nutrition, you're just not that hungry. Like I don't even, I used to eat like Garfield and, and I, I probably had parasites and, and yeast and all this stuff that were compounding the issues and my cells were dehydrated. I wasn't drinking enough water. I didn't have a good fat membrane around the cells. So I couldn't take nutrients in well. I had inflammation on the cells. 
there's just a lot of things that were impeding my uh, nutrient absorption on a cellular level because if it can float around in the bloodstream that's great it's not what you eat it's not what you digest it's not what you it's what you absorb Agreed. you have to get it into the cell if you don't get it into the cell we were talking about that earlier about vitamin a and zinc and stuff you know people being deficient in those things because they have the pathway to get it into the cell is is corrupted at many levels so that's what we help people unwind that unpack it and figure out how to do it um but fasting is um, one of the most powerful things that you can do to heal your body because as soon as you stop eating, your body, all the energy, because people don't realize like 60 to 80% of your entire energy used on a daily basis for your activities of daily actually goes towards digestion. So if you can reroute that from a heavy meal, like so what we do is unless somebody is anorexic or bulimic or type 2 diabetic, we have them replace heavy breakfast with liquid nourishment. And we just have a mix up our greens. We have a mix up our greens with water or with some sprouted nut milk or non, you know, unsweetened cranberry juice, whatever. And they boom, they get all this nutrients within 20 minutes. All the nutrients are into the bloodstream and hopefully getting into the cells. I mean, some of it is um, without the burden of digestion. So that energy that was used to break that food down in the morning is now rerouted to boost up your immune system, take care of invaders or whatever's going on. And for your activities of daily living, your think your mental clarity, your um, ability to walk, move, you know, do these types of things, your activities of daily living. So that is a very powerful concept. So what we teach people in the beginning is like, let's just baby step into this. I'm not saying, hey, let's do a 40 day water fast and go out in the desert like Jesus did. Most people, it's not feasible. They couldn't do it. They're going to fall apart. It's just like, they're never going to start because it's too big of a deal. So let's just take breakfast and replace it. This isn't even really technically fasting. It's liquid nourishment. And we're going from, you know, bacon, eggs, and, and French fries. Not Well, I don't know. Maybe some people eat French fries. I mean, I had leftover pizzas. It used to be breakfast. That was freaking awesome. But it didn't work for me as I got older, right? Because I wanted to wake up and feel good. So anyway, you replace the heavy meal with the liquid nourishment, and that's it. And then maybe down the road, then you um, maybe eat lunch, and then maybe for dinner, you do liquid nourishment. Or you do liquid nourishment for breakfast and lunch, and then you have a, a small dinner, right? And then, then down the road, maybe you do liquid nourishment on one day where you don't eat. Like for me, Wednesdays is the days, like it's today. I don't eat because I have group coaching on Wednesdays, and I know I have to speak on this day. Um, we also schedule as many podcasts as possible because I have more mental acuity and more energy because I don't have the burden of digestion happening. And I'm fine, and I'm healthier. So when you stop eating – you actually can clean up your body will start cleaning up dead cells and healing you and you're you'll have a more youthful appearance you'll have more energy you'll heal the gut everything so actually it's said though eventually if you can work your way into a water fast and do a three-day water fast for five days that's a complete immune system reset and there's a clinic that specializes in medical supervised water fashion called the true north clinic uh it's led by dr alan goldhammer down in california true north clinic and they do specialized medical supervised water fasting. So um, very inexpensive. You go down there and I think it's like 145 bucks a night. All meals are included. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> All that water. Water meal. And, yeah. um, and you, don't, you don't do a whole lot when you're fasting like that, when you're doing a water fast. You just kind of chill. You're not worrying about exercise. You're letting the body heal. You're literally, again, this is doing surgery without a knife. Powerful. Yeah, right powerful stuff and for those of you that are religious you want to get closer to god what have all religions said forever fast and pray fast and pray so it, it'll unlock your channels to your spiritual world too um because you'll lighten up you'll actually lighten up the load so i couldn't say enough about it i just think people should go into it in baby steps i went into more detail and i can't remember which podcast it was one of my first ones we went into fasting inter intermittent fasting but it's um, definitely something that everybody should be should be working their way into and, and make it part of their their uh, lifestyle regimen. I agree 100 percent. And I also do a weekly liquid fast. I did mine yesterday. I alternate between Tuesday or Wednesday, depending how busy my schedule is for the same reason. It's super easy to just grab your liquid and have your next meal. And, you know, it's also for many people when I work with them that liquid nourishment is putting far more into their cells than what they're getting from the food that they're eating because their digestive system isn't working properly and it's not able to break down their food. But when it comes in a liquid form, it's so much easier for the body to then be able to absorb it into the bloodstream yeah. and get yeah. the there's a, there's a rehabilitation process for the gut. And even if you're healthy on the outside, you got a six pack abs, 80% of you have severe digestive issues because you've been eating a lot of cooked food. 
and cooked food is like doing bench press with a broomstick. There's no real resistance there. The, f- the food has been literally, I mean, I, it's been corrupted, bastardized. I mean, it's just, it is, it's de- denatured, maybe a better word. And so you want resistance and resistance builds resilience and it builds and strengthens that peristaltic or gut action to move food through and pull nutrients through the intestinal lining and those, those hair-like structures in the gut called villi um, and the intestines and stuff. So it's really important um, that we, 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 we take care of the gut and we put raw, unprocessed, uncooked foods in. Those are what's going to rehabilitate the gut. Now, with that being said, you don't want to, you know, you got to be very careful. If, you, if you've been doing bench press with a broomstick your whole life, eating all cooked food, and all of a sudden you throw on the weights, 225 pounds, that's completely raw food. Uh, you're going to have some you gas, gut problems. But it could be painful because it's too much weight. Like it's too much. So very important when you do this, we usually tell people to figure out what percentage of your food by weight right now is currently raw, uncooked, and bump it up 10%. And do two other things. Take digestive enzymes to help. Those are going to be like your spotters to help you break that food down, especially heavy meals. Number two, chew your food really, really, really well, which is another secret in our core four secrets manuals. Chewing your food well is profound benefits unbelievable and actually just masticating your teeth you'll stimulate those meridian points and you can uptake your serotonin and your happy juice by 500 percent. so i hope you just understood what i just said there um for those of you that have depression anxiety you can increase serotonin by up to 500 percent by stimulating those meridian points through chewing your food well there's no supplement or pharmaceutical drug that can do this you can simply do it by chewing your food so we're designed to chew our food that's why we have teeth Mm -hmm. And I think that's the reason why a lot of us are having to get our our wisdom teeth pulled is because we've gotten weaker because we haven't had the, we haven't been able to take a hit. We're not out there chewing on nuts and cracking things and building up that jaw strength. And so the mouths, our mouths are shrinking because it hasn't been needed. Or we're just rushing through our meals, right? In our do world. And we chew three to five times on average and then just swallow it in far bigger chunks than we're supposed to be swallowing it, right? Eating soft food, processed food. We're not not yet developed that now there's like i saw online they're selling they're probably making millions of dollars they put a ball in your mouth and you bite down on it. it's a jaw exercise and it builds up your jaw muscles and makes you look younger right it's like exactly but we could just do your freaking food before. yeah <laughs> like, I, do, I actually do challenges with my clients and say hey just the whole family tonight you know, take a bite of your dinner and see who can chew it more times or bring an mm-hmm. apple to our program and let's all take a bite of the apple and see how many times we can chew it. And, yeah. you know, when I do that and I'm consciously chewing to the most that I possibly can, I've got up to over 60 chews of one mouthful of apple and it's so juicy and so flavorful as a result. Do I do that every time? No, but I certainly also don't chew it just three to five times. I'm much more conscious about chewing at least 20 times for every single mouthful. So here's that, another here's another reason why you want to chew your food. Um, I can't remember the guy's name now. I got a I have notes somewhere, but he was in a concentration camp um, back, you know, in Germany and the Nazis and all that stuff, right? He didn't lose weight like everybody else. He maintained his body mass. He wasn't getting skinny. And what he would do is he would chew his food two to three hundred times. Wow. Per bite, which is hard to do. It's hard to get even yeah. up to eighty. I've tried, right? But he yeah. what what he have to do? He knew. So what he was doing there was not only was he maximizing the nutrients of whatever the hell they gave him, but he was also stimulating enzyme production because in your mouth, you have two up ducts up above and four down below that, that create enzymes, amylase and lipase. Yeah. So he was creating and enzymes are the carriers of electric biophoton energy. So he was like recirculating and regenerating himself by loading all these enzymes into his body and producing them. And he didn't lose weight like everybody else did in the concentration camps. And he kept very strong and good mental clarity and stuff. So there's another big reason why you want to chew your food good. I mean, look what it did for that guy. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and not to mention the benefit of the serotonin when you're in a concentration camp. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. I love that. So um, as we wrap up here, um, I always love to ask my guests, what does don't wait for your wake up call mean to you? Don't wait for your wake up call. Well, I think it just means the best time to to do anything is now. It's yeah. it's right now because right? that's all we really have. Like, oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it. That doesn't exist. You know, uh, living in the past. I always tell people like that. The past and the future does not exist. Those are illusions. The only thing we have is right now, right now, right now, right now. So, um, what that means to me is just like 
if, if there's, especially if there's something you heard today that, that inspired you right now, that's just theory. You have to go take action. Mm -hmm. It's simply pure physics will take over at that time. What you put out is what you get back. So mm -hmm. if you start taking action in a direction towards you say, like, I'm worth it. I love myself. Okay. This sounds good. I'm going to start making some changes and um, you know, I'm going to start making my health a priority. And that's usually what I find is that if you're not where you want health wise, you just have not, your health is not a priority yet. As soon as you prioritize health, the universe will start realigning itself for you. And maybe you did, maybe you pri prioritized health last week. And that's why you're listening to the show today, right? That's how it works. What you put out is what you get back. So to answer your question, I think that means take action now, 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 and get moving and let, let, you know, let physics take over at that point, basically. I absolutely love that and fully agree with you. I've, this show has been fabulous because we're so in alignment in our work and in our, our vision and our desire to help others and, and educate others in how they can take responsibility for their health. So how can people get hold of you? And I know you also have some products, et cetera. So please share. Um, sure. Like share. Well, the best place to get a hold of us is at, just at our website at chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. We just want to teach people to have a, have a, have a chemical free lifestyle. Um, we're all about you being your own doctor, you learning how to self heal, self empowerment, um, taking the reins and, and controlling your entire life. Um, and the health aspect is just one thing to drive up all the other aspects of your life, your relationships, you know, your career, your finances, your spiritual health, all that stuff. Cause it's all connected to who to you. So we do have products. So if people want to try our products, we have a lot of them. So I'd probably just go to the products tab and then scroll down to savings bundles. That way they can get a discount and they can do like a little jump start bundle. Or I actually do what's called the total energy and detox bundle every month. And I also take our turmeric product I was telling you about. It doesn't need black pepper. Yes, people no black pepper needed, um, which is really cool. It's, it's hyper absorbable. So, or just pick a bundle that fits your needs or your budget. Um, and then at checkout, they, if they put in the code Y G H j y g h j for your guided health journey they get an additional five percent off so you guys can get a double discount and we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products so we know that our products are just part of the toolkit um we've worked really hard on them over there i'm very fanatical about clean cleanliness and potency um dr scott treadway our formulator has helped me with all this he's um one of the top formulators in the world and um if something doesn't work for you then just call us up we'll refund your money and We'll get you on the phone with myself or another coach and we'll find a solution for you, even if it's another company. We don't care. We're just trying to help people basically wake up and feel good. That's our goal. I love that. So thank you very much for sharing. And you kind of answered it before, but I just want to know if you have another tip because I always love to leave the audience with a recommendation on how they get started today. You mentioned that just hearing it and no action gets you nowhere. So what's your tip to have people step into action today well um when they go to our website at chemicalfreebody.com and you're hunting around a little thing will pop up and you can get a free gift that's our core four secrets manual and the, there's four actionable steps that you can take um three of them are free it doesn't cost you anything one of them is about getting your water right um i mean that could cost you a little bit if you went and got gallon glass jars and at least went to your grocery store and bought single purified water 25 to 44 cents a gallon all the way up to complete systems that'll help you, you know, purify, restructure the water, charge it with molecular hydrogen like mine. I'm literally high on water right now. I've been high on water since fall of 2018. So um, there's a lot you can do with water, but you know, the chewing your food, the avoiding liquids with meals, there's a breath work in there and we kind of give you the steps and we found, feel that this is the foundation. So usually those are some action steps you could do today. But I think, you know, before that, it's just put yourself first. I mean, you know, especially if you're a, a mom or a, a, a moms, especially, put themselves last. I mean, guys are doing it too. And they wait till the wheel falls off and then they can't take care of anybody. The, the kids, man, they're watching you. Do you want them to be in your shoes and like putting themselves last? No, you want them to put themselves first. The best way to make sure that they're doing it is mama bear shows baby bear how to live. And mama bear should be putting herself first. It's like putting on the oxygen mask in the plane. When the plane's going down, put it on yourself first, then the child. If you try to put it on the child and you pass out, you both die, right? So take care of yourself first, put yourself first. Don't wait for a wheel to fall off. Get ahead of the game. Look around. Everybody's falling apart. Don't join the crowd. Don't be a lemming. Don't just jump off the cliff. Say, you know what? I can see that you guys are jumping off cliff. 
that looks like a bunch of rocks down there. It doesn't look like many of you are making it. I'm going to go this way and just take 180 degrees, go the opposite way, turn off the news. It's 24 seven negativity. And they just lie. They just lie all the time. And it's just, we got to stay away from that stuff. So hang around positive people, put yourself first, love yourself and set an example for, 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 for your kids and your, your community. I love that. And as you say, that's another paradigm shift, right? It's not necessarily what we were taught. And I know for me, when I got into health coaching, I learned that and created a little mantra for myself that I could say every day so that I could shift my mindset around self-care. And that mantra is that self-care is the most selfless act because it allows you to show up and give the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. And I say that all the time. And yet it's not how I live my life when my kids were little, because I didn't know it's not what I saw my parents do. Right. And so your kids are watching and it is time to step into that paradigm shift. So thank you so, so much for joining me here today, Tim. I absolutely love this conversation with you and encourage all the listeners to check out your four, um, steps and, uh, start taking action today because three of them, as you said, they can implement right away. And then they also can start to learn about water and understanding the benefit of good quality water, as opposed to tap water that's loaded with toxins and all the rest that you have in your store, check it out. And the discount code will be in the show notes. So thank you again. Thank you to the audience for joining us. And I truly hope that Tim's story and everything he shared today inspires you to step into taking responsibility for your health or to be, you know, even more proactive in your health than you already are. See you next time. If you're enjoying my content and someone that wants to step into being proactive in your health and learning more, I would love to invite you to join my membership community. There's a link in the show notes for only $19.99 a month. You get access to all of my content and there's a lot as well as weekly calls that you can come and get your health questions answered. It's truly priceless. I'd love to see you join the community. Check out the link in the show notes. 